Hello everyone, welcome to Primetime Recaps. Please like and subscribe to support the channel. It will make us happy and help us keep making videos like this. Today, I'm going to be explaining a movie titled Queen Pins, released in the year 2021. Warning, spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie opens up with some FBI agents breaking into the residence of Connie to arrest her. As she surrenders, she reflects on how she got herself into a mess seven months ago. Connie happens to be a three-time gold medalist Olympic walk racer. She frowns at being employed, instead, she saves money by using coupons. She is married to Rick, an IORS auditor, who is unsupportive. He is always hostile towards Connie as he can't stand her being without a job. He condemns her stocking up items in the house using coupons, rather than getting a job. They couldn't have children and so, they invest a lot of money on fertility treatments because of her consistent insistence on multiple treatments. When Connie is finally pregnant, she has a miscarriage and this leaves her frustrated. She also has to pay for fertility treatment debts. Soon, Rick gets a job that allows him travel for three weeks every month and Connie is alone most of the time. Connie has a best friend named Jojo. Jojo lives with her mother and she doesn't have a decent job because her identity was stolen, thus, she makes videos about how to save money on YouTube. A local postman named Earl has a love affair with Jojo. In Jojo's free time, she flings with Earl and sells cosmetics from one house to another, but this doesn't seem to work out fine. For every time Connie goes to the store, she buys things in bulk and offers the cashier, Greg, numerous coupons for the purchase made. The coupons help with a few purchases until she almost exhausts them. Later on, when she is arranging the food items on the rack, she sees the baby wallpaper in the box at the extreme and this makes her sad. To ease her depression, she begins to eat a lot of cereal, sadly, the cereal is stale. She then decides to write a complaint letter to the cereal company about the stale cereal. In a few days, she receives a free box of cereal. Greg doesn't see the big deal in the company giving her a free box after she complained. He says it's the norm. Connie later intimates Jojo about her new plan of sending complaint messages to companies to get coupons. She sends multiple complaint messages to companies to get multiple coupons, even if there's nothing wrong with the products. Jojo comes to Connie's house to see the multiple coupons Connie has acquired and she offers to pay $20 for each. Jojo's offer makes Connie realize that selling coupons could make her 100% profit and this could be an ideal business opportunity. Moments later, both look online to find out where the coupons are being produced. They find out it is being produced in factories located in Chihuahua, Mexico. Initially, Jojo doubts the idea of going with Connie to Mexico, but since she is in debt, she decides to assist. They decide to buy the coupons and sell them to mothers and wives. Ken, a loss prevention agent, is seen in a store, scolding a woman trying to use fraudulent coupons to get discounts. The manager of the store tells Ken he'd grant her offer regardless, because she has been a regular customer at their store for a very long time. However, Ken refuses on the premise that there are rules. Later at night, Ken goes back to his lonely home, drinks, and watches TV to escape his loneliness. Connie and Coco get to the coupon factory to watch the operations of staff in the company. Following this, they resolve to meet a couple, Rosa and Alejandro. They track the couple, but when they notice they're being followed, they try to run. Connie and Jojo tell them they are only trying to help them and so, the couple invite Connie and Jojo to their home for a proper conversation. While at it, Alejandro reveals that Rosa is pregnant and they do not earn enough to cater for a family. This makes Connie and Jojo's proposition easier. They say if the couple can get coupons from the company, they'll sell the coupons within the USA and share a portion of the profit with them. Alejandro is skeptical about the whole idea, however, his wife is ready to secure the future of their unborn baby, thus, she convinces her husband to agree. Alejandro then creates a plan. The manufacturing facility is divided into two parts, the printing the area, which is where Alejandro is employed and redemption area, which is where Rosa is working. For every coupon they print, it's common to have an extra coupon that is meant to be destroyed. Alejandro instead of destroying it is able to ship the additional coupons in the direction of Connie and Jojo as their trucks are distributing them throughout the USA. In a few days, they receive their first box of coupons. 
Following this, they set up their own website and a small company named Savvy Super Saver. Jojo promotes their site on her YouTube channel and this helps them sell a large number of coupons and make a lot of money. Unfortunately, this gets Ken's attention as he is informed of the massive financial losses that stores are encountering. Ken receives lots of emails and calls from some executives complaining about the huge loss of money. As a result, he conducts a severe investigation to see if he would see a credit card number in the numerous purchases made using these coupons. After days of rigorous work, Ken goes to see his wife who is also using the coupons and she shares the website with Ken, telling him that it is promoted by a woman on YouTube. Ken furthers his investigation on the site and in no time, Connie and Jojo are terrified to find out that their PayPal account has been blocked as a result of their suspicious activity. Connie says they'll have to prove that they're running a legitimate business, thus, they run to contact a hacker named Tina. She steals Jojo's identity. She takes Connie and Jojo to her location and instructs them on how to keep their business simple so as to protect their funds. For instance, after she has deleted Jojo's videos, she will use Jojo's cosmetic label back to black. As a cover for their coupon business, they will be given a variety of fake IDs which Connie will use to open new bank accounts and even purchase a house for them to use. She also says they'll have to wait at least six months before they can spend the money. After the decision that Tina will be paid 10% to help them, she then gives them a unique encrypted USB stick to store their important documents in. With Tina's help, there aren't any clues found on the web for Kent to investigate and so, Ken contacts the FBI to further investigate the case. They consider the case with coupons ridiculous and decide to give the case to their most pathetic employee, Albert, to handle. As Albert seems less busy almost all the time, he accepts the case. Utilizing Jojo's cosmetics brand and Tina's fake IDs to disguise the coupon business, the coupon scam starts expanding into a profitable business, while Ken leaves messages to the FBI each day. Six months later, Connie as well as Jojo realized that their cash is safe to use so Connie tells Jojo that they have made over $5 million. However, since this is their dirty cash, they have to invest it in order to cover things up. Soon, they are able to convince the bank to give them the money in cash saying that they want to hire employees to run their cosmetics business. Other contrary, they use the money to buy boats, cars, guns, planes and other luxurious things. They make an excursion on a chattered plane to Las Vegas. On the plane, they discuss their future plans and Jojo tells Connie she will pay for her mother's mortgage, while Connie is focused on going for fertility treatment again. After a while, Ken finally receives a call from Albert. He tells him that he is unable to access the information from the website, because an expert has deleted the cookie trail. Since the coupons are delivered by mail, Ken contacts someone that can help. Few days later, Ken meets with Simon, the postal inspector. Simon takes on the case and asks for Ken to buy coupons from the site so as to be able to have a look around the system. When the package arrives, Simon notices the address on the envelope and figures out it is where in Arizona. Both make to further investigate the issue, so the flight of Phoenix, as they fly, they bond in their mission. Jojo accompanies Connie to the fertility center to see the doctor, who tells Connie that he'd give her another attempt to becoming pregnant. Connie makes to pick the seed of an anonymous donor. Later on, Tina calls Connie and Jojo to inquire about their lavish lifestyle. She takes them to her hideout where she informs them that their bank account is always safe and by using Jojo's cosmetic brand, they can clean any trail of suspicion. She says they have to sell their purchases quickly and deposit the money back into their accounts in tiny bits. Meanwhile, Simon and Ken are setting up interviews for the cashiers who work in the stores these ladies have been purchasing from. Most of them are familiar with Connie, as they find her a frequent coupons user. Greg eventually tells Simon and Ken all about Connie. He also tells them he is very sure that it is Connie who runs the Savvy Super Saver site. The following day, they go to a post office at a local location to check who has any knowledge about coupons. The employees point at Earl because he has been watching videos of Jojo. They soon interrogate Earl, who doesn't spill any useful information. Connie and Jojo try selling everything on eBay, but cannot because the items are many. As a result, they visit a cafe where they meet two guys who belong to a gun club. So, they get their address and offer to sell their guns to the gun club. Sadly, the boss is uninterested in purchasing the guns so they sell it off at a very ridiculous price. 
Earl goes to Jojo's house disguising as the regular postman while Ken and Simon watch closely. At night when Jojo arrives home, Ken is shocked to see that it is Jojo that his wife has been watching on YouTube. The following day, Jojo ignores her mail, but rather heads to the warehouse as usual. Ken and Simon follow suit and they see Connie coming out from a thatched house. After gathering more evidence about Connie and Jojo, with the permission of the FBI, Simon and Ken get the license to take Connie and Jojo into custody. After they search their home, their warehouse is also searched. Their arrest is broadcast and Earl is shocked to see that Jojo is arrested for fraud. As the investigation continues, Rosa and Alejandro are also tracked as the originators. When they reach their location, they find out the couple already moved. Whilst Jojo is released by bail, Connie receives a brief visit by Rick so that he could correct her wrongdoings. After getting strained from his lack of support and resentment, Connie reveals her intentions for a divorce. The two women appear in court, where Jojo receives 10 days in jail and one year of probation. Connie receives 11 months in jail. Ken isn't satisfied with this judgment because he feels they got free too easily. The company's Connie wrecked want to forget about the case for fear of negative publicity. The majority of the profits from the scam go to the authorities, but they do not notice the boxes inside the nursery as they think it's food. As a result, Jojo is able to save the boxes with the knowledge that Connie had hidden cash in them initially. In jail, Connie receives the divorce papers and results from her fertility doctor confirming she's pregnant. At the end of the movie, Jojo starts an affair with Earl and moves to her home in Montenegro where they continue their coupon business without the interference of the authorities. Connie is released from jail and joins them in the business. I hope you liked the movie. Please turn on the bell icon to be the first to watch our videos when we post contents like this. You can also suggest a movie you would love us to explain in the comments section. Thanks for watching.